How's it going, folks? I'm Deswood Desfit, and this is the brand new Garmin Foreigner 255 Music, the successor to the super popular Foreigner 245 that came out over three years ago. And although this is an update to the 245, with the feature set that this watch has, it basically replaces the Garmin Foreigner 745. And these are features many of us wanted, like an altimeter, full triathlon support, more training feedback, and even the new multi-band satellite system mode that just came out with their high-end Phoenix 7 line of watches, and even more features beyond just that. So I've been wearing the Foreigner 255 for about the last month or so, and in this video I'll be going over everything this watch has to offer, including all the new health features, the sports and fitness features, as well as the smartwatch features. But I've also got boatloads of data to share in regards to how accurate the 255 is in tracking sports like running both inside and outside, cycling both inside and outside, pool swimming, as well as weight training, just to give you a good idea if this device is going to be right for you. And if the information does help you out at all, do me a favor and just quickly hit that like button down below. It's a small little thing that you can do that'll help this video and the channel quite a bit and I appreciate it. And the Foreigner 255 isn't the only new watch that Garmin's launching today, so Garmin's also launching their new Foreigner 955 and 955 Solar, and I've also got another in-depth review of this watch, as well as a video comparing the 255 to the 955 that I'll have linked down in the description below, so you can go ahead and check out those videos once you're done over here. So let's first go over some of the different options that you have with the Foreigner 255, and first up, there's two different sizes, a larger 255 with a 45.6 millimeter diameter case and a 255S with a smaller 41 millimeter case, and this is what the larger 255 looks like on my 187 millimeter circumference wrist. So what they've done here is make a version that's slightly bigger than the original 245 and a version that's a bit smaller. But then we also have music versions of the Foreigner 255 in both the sizes. So the music versions can store and playback music directly from the watch itself without you needing to have your phone nearby. And you can do this with music services like Spotify, Pandora, Amazon Music, as well as Deezer. And then for the design, it's largely very similar to the original 245, but I noticed that it's a little bit more streamlined because the buttons are a little bit less pronounced, but they're still easy to find and easy to use, so no worries there. But the biggest difference you'll notice on the outside is when you flip them over, and on the back is the latest fourth generation Elevate heart rate sensor. And just to give you a little bit of a spoiler, I've had very good results with the heart rate sensor on this watch with all the testing I've been doing, and more details on that later in the video. And then for battery life, they've really upped the ante with the new 255 versus the previous generation. So with the larger 255, that can get up to two weeks in smartwatch mode without recording any outdoor activities versus the previous generation, which could only get up to seven days. And then for GPS battery life, you can get up to 30 hours of recording time on the larger 255 versus 24 hours on the original 245. And then here's some other battery life scenarios with the different size options as well as different modes that you can check out right now. So before we get into the new health, fitness, and sports features, let's quickly go over these smartwatch features. So just like the previous generation 245, the 255 can show the weather and calendar information from your smartphone, and you can also receive notifications from apps, texts, and calls. And for text, on an iPhone, you can receive notifications and view them on the watch itself, but you won't be able to reply, and that has everything to do with Apple, unfortunately, and not Garmin, by the way. Apple just likes to keep text message reply functionality exclusive to the Apple Watch with an iPhone. However, if you're using the 255 with an Android phone, you will be able to reply with predefined responses you can set up in the Garmin Connect app. And then, like I mentioned before, the music versions of the 255 have offline music storage and playback, but the non-music versions still have the capability of controlling the music playing on your phone if it's nearby. But now onto the health, fitness, and sports features, and that's really kind of what the 255 is all about. So the Foreigner 255 comes with Garmin's latest fourth generation Elevate heart rate sensor that you can track your heart rate 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and it also has an SpO2 sensor for tracking your blood oxygen saturation levels. It also has Garmin's advanced sleep tracking where it can give you a sleep score as well as provide information on your sleep stages throughout the night. In addition to that, they're also rolling out a few new data screens here on the sleep widget where you can see the trends of your sleep stages as well as your sleep score over the last seven days. And then the 255 also comes with Garmin's health snapshot feature, which can collect multiple health metrics all at one time, including your heart rate, stress level, SpO2 level, as well as respiration rate. But now let's get into a brand new feature to come with the 255, and this also does come with the new 955, and that's a new feature called HRV status. So your HRV status can be balanced, which is probably what you want to see, which means that things are running normal and can also mean that you're responding well to training. But then there's also unbalanced as well as poor HRV status, which could mean that you need more rest or there's some other things going on with your health, which could use some attention. And then from there, you can also see your HRV in chart format from the last night's sleep, including the average as well as highest point during the night. And then you can also see your average HRV trends over the last seven days. And then of course, you can view your HRV historical data in Garmin Connect. HRV has been around for quite some time, but it's recently been getting a lot of popularity, so it's nice to see them integrate this feature. And HRV also is playing a role in their new training status, which also has been updated, and we'll talk about that here in just one bit. 
And then another new thing to come with the Foreigner 255 is a feature called your morning report. And this, I gotta say, is a pretty great feature. So what happens is that when you wake up, there's this new special screen that kind of greets you showing the weather for the day along with a fun background. And what your morning report will give you is a, basically a breakdown of your day as well as your last night's sleep. So the first screen here shows my daily suggested workout. The next screen shows my sleep from the night before. The next screen down shows my HRV status. Next up is my body battery status. And then there's a more detailed weather report for the day. And then there's some other data you can choose to show such as your intensity minutes for the week as well as steps for the week. And then once you're done viewing your morning report, you can just take on the day as they put it. And seriously, I think this feature is great because before when I woke up, I had to scroll to different widgets to access all this different information. And now it's just all in one place. And you can edit what information is shown in your morning report, by the way. So for fitness features, the 255 can track your steps as well as intensity minutes, just like the previous generation 245. But with the 255, it now has an altimeter. So you can also track your floors climb throughout the day as an additional stat. And since the 255 does have an altimeter, you also will be able to see your total elevation gain and loss for outdoor activities. And yet another new feature to come with the 255, since it has an altimeter, is that it also can natively collect running power with a compatible accessory. So you'll be able to do this with an HRM Pro, an RD Pod, an HRM Run, or an HRM Try. And running power is an interesting data point that has gained a lot of popularity in recent years. And what it aims to do is provide just another way of assessing your effort during a run beyond just heart rate and pace. Now, I think Garmin's calling this native running power, but all this really means is that you don't have to go to the Connect IQ store and download the running power data field to collect this data. So previously, with watches that did support running power, what you had to do is that you had to go to the Connect IQ store, you had to download the running power data field, you had to install on the watch, and then you could collect the running power data. Now, when you just pair up one of these compatible accessories, you just automatically collect the running power data. And then for another little tidbit, it will also collect running power while running on a treadmill, but it may not be quite as accurate as what you'll get outdoors though because there are going to be other variables outdoors like wind and elevation that can be a factor but hey it's there if you want it and also for those of you curious a stride footpot unfortunately doesn't work with garmin's native running power implementation but a stride footpot still does work with the 255 you just have to go to the connect iq store and download the stride app to make that work and then for training and performance feedback, the 255 can estimate your running VO2 max just like the 245. But with the 255, well, you'll also be able to get an estimate on your cycling VO2 max because 255 now adds cycling power meter support as an external accessory, which wasn't available on the 245. And then along with that, the 255 also gets Garmin's new visual race predictor feature. And this feature was first rolled out on their high-end Phoenix 7 line of watches. And here's where you can see how your runs over the last four weeks factor into possible race times that you could achieve for common race distances. And then we also have training status. And this was available on the 245, but they've revamped it a bit with the 255. So training status gives you an indication of where you're at based on your current VO2 max estimate, acute training load, which is your training history over the last seven days. But since the 255 also collects your HRV, it also factors that into your training status. And then for training features, along with Garmin Coach, which you can use for training plans, they've also added some new race widgets that can show your race calendar along with another widget that shows your primary race. And these aren't just as simple as just showing events in your calendar. There's a lot more things going on behind the scenes. So like here, I have a couple races on my race calendar that I created in Garmin Connect. And you can do this for lots of different kinds of activities like running, cycling, and more. But here's what's neat is that you can also enter the location for these events when you create them. And if you do so, it'll pull the weather information for the day and time of the event so you can plan ahead. And then what you can do too is that if you have multiple races in your calendar, you can set one of them to be your primary event and it'll show up in the primary race widget. And here's where you can see a countdown to the event. And then in addition to that, for running, it will even give you a visual race predictor screen here with a predicted time based on your previous training. And your event doesn't need to even conform to one of the common race distances like 5K, 10K, and half marathon. Like this event right here, I just set up for five miles and still gives a prediction for that specific distance. And then you can scroll down one more screen for more detailed weather information. But if we go back to this screen, this gets us to another new feature is that the 255 can build out your daily suggested workouts up to a week ahead, whether you have an event or not in your calendar. And then for one final thing surrounding this, on your race day, your morning report background will change to a race-inspired theme and it'll also display your race in your report. So the Foreigner 255 also has the ability to load in routes for basic navigation, but it also comes with Garmin's up ahead feature. So what this is, is that when you create a route in Garmin Connect, what you can do here is also add course points along your route for certain things like bathrooms, shelters, food or hydration reminders, or a host of other things of interest. And what happens is that during your activity, when you load in that route for navigation, is that it will give you cues to the next course point, which can be super helpful. 
And the Foreigner 255 also comes with plenty of safety tracking features like Live Track, where you can send a link to your friends and family who can actually follow along your outdoor activity. There's also going to be instant detection where it can attempt to detect a crash and then send an alert to one of your emergency contacts, as well as requesting assistance from your one of your emergency contacts. But just note that you do have to have your phone with you for these features because the 255 will use your phone's cellular connection to send out those alerts. And then for activity profiles, the 255 comes with a bunch of activity profiles, like all the normal ones you'd expect, like running and cycling, both indoors and outdoors. It has plenty of gym profiles, like pool swimming, weight training, and high intensity interval training, and then even yoga, breath work, and more. But the biggest news about activity profiles on the 255 is that it now comes with an open water swimming profile as well as a triathlon mode. And before you had to get into the Foreigner 745 or the new Instinct 2 to get this. So this is a big upgrade here for the Foreigner 200 series. And along with that, since the 255 has an altimeter, you also get additional profiles like the floor climb profile and the ski and snowboard activity profiles, which can automatically track your runs throughout the day. And I have a video that I did a while back demonstrating the ski activity profile on a Garmin Phoenix, and it's pretty neat how it works. And I'll have that video linked down in the description below. And yet another new thing to come with the 255, and this was also something that was just introduced with their high-end Phoenix 7 and Epic Sports watches, is that the 255 can now leverage more satellite systems than before. So with the 245, that can leverage GPS, Galileo, as well as GLONASS satellite systems. But with the 255, it can leverage all those as well as Baidu and QZSS satellite systems, so you just have more coverage. But not only that, the 255 also has the new dual band satellite system mode where it's able to leverage multiple satellite systems on different frequencies at the same time and what this aims to do is increase GPS accuracy, and this is especially useful in places like where there's a lot of overhead obstructions like buildings, rock faces, or tree cover. And for the accuracy, well, it's basically spot on when it comes to total distances, and I tested this with a ton of different activities like running, road biking, as well as mountain biking. It was right in line with some of the other devices that I consider to be very accurate. And then for the finer detail of the GPS tracks, it was super crispy here, folks. And these are some of the most accurate tracks I've ever seen. So in fact, on this run, it was spot on the entire time. And then for mountain biking, where there can be a lot of tree cover and switchbacks, which can sometimes pose problems for GPS, again, rock solid, and it was good to go. Now, one thing to note about this multiband all satellite assistance mode is that yes, it produces some super crispy GPS tracks, but it also uses more battery life than the other GPS modes. And it's not like the other GPS modes are inaccurate by any means. In fact, I still got very good results even out of the older 245. Where this multiband all satellite assistance mode is gonna be especially useful are in those challenging situations, like I mentioned before, like tall buildings, tree cover, and rock faces. So unless you're in one of those situations, or if you're just getting wonky GPS for some reason or another, you could probably just use one of the other modes and save on battery life, but that's totally up to you. And then for treadmill accuracy, as in how well the 255 did at estimating running distances indoors, well, it was basically spot on in this run right here. And if for some reason, if it is off, you can adjust and calibrate the distance when you go to save your run. And then for pool swimming, the 255 can automatically track distance as well as your laps without you having to interact with a watch at all. And it did just great here. So it also has automatic stroke detection, which was fine. And it also can automatically detect rest periods in between intervals. Okay, so now onto heart rate accuracy. So the Foreigner 255 comes with Garmin's fourth generation Elevate heart rate sensor. And in terms of accuracy, this performs quite well. And I've got tons of examples for you here, all the way from activities that are generally easier for these types of sensors to track, like indoor cycling and running, all the way to activities that tend to pose more challenges challenges like weight training as well as mountain biking. So let's start out with some running, and as you can see from this run, it was pretty much spot on for the entire run. There were a couple spots here and there where it tracked a few beats per minute high, and then a couple spots at the tail end of the workout where it wandered ever so slightly, but this is an extremely good result. And then on this treadmill run, for nearly the entire run, it was spot on, but it did have some moments at the end of my run where it tracked a little bit high. And then for indoor cycling, again, quite good overall and not too much to complain about. A couple little blips here and there, but we're talking about just a few beats per minute off, so nothing to worry about. But now let's get into some activities that pose more challenges for wrist-based heart rate sensors. And we'll first start out with some road biking outside where we start to introduce vibrations and bumps in the road, which can throw off these types of sensors. But as you can see, the 255 did a really good job here. There were a couple spots like here where it dipped slightly and then a couple moments at the end where it read a little bit high, but overall, this is quite a good result for road biking with a wrist-based optical heart rate sensor. 
But now let's get into mountain biking, and this is where we start to introduce a lot more variables like gripping onto the handlebars, as well as a lot of rough terrain, which can make the watch bounce around the wrist, which can pose challenges for these types of wrist-based optical heart rate sensors. But as you can see, this is a pretty respectable result. So there was a little bit of weirdness at the beginning where it took a minute or so to lock on, but after that, it was right in line for quite some time. The majority of this ride was on rolling terrain in addition to some climbing, which we can see for about the first three quarters of the ride. But at this point right here is when I started to go downhill and pun intended, this is also when accuracy tends to go downhill for these types of sensors, where you can see some points like here and here where it wandered more than what we saw before. And even though that's to be expected, the 255 still did a really good job Job in handling it and stayed really close to the other sensors. And then now we get to some weight training, which is arguably one of the hardest activities for these types of wrist-based heart rate sensors to track. And here's where we can certainly see more variance, but in the whole landscape of wrist-based heart rate sensors, this isn't bad. There were some sets where the 255 tracked a bit high, like here and here, and then over here, and then a few where it tracked a little bit low, like here and here. But still, the fact that the 255 still was for the most part on track for most of the workout, this is pretty respectable. And then on the app side of things, the 255 also comes with Garmin's new real-time setting sync feature where you'll be able to edit settings in real time on the app, like activities, data screens, data fields, and so much more, which can be a lot more convenient to do on the app than the watch itself. So for some final thoughts, well, the previous generation 245, that was a super capable watch and it offered a lot for the money, but with the 255, well, they kind of went bonkers with it and decided to just throw in a ton of new stuff. And as you can tell, it performed pretty darn well. And for the price, the base level 255 without music comes in at 349 and the 255 with music comes in at 399. And yes, that is considerably more than the 245 was when it originally came out. However, what needs to be considered though is that with the feature set that the 255 has, it really should be compared to the foreigners. 745 and the 255 even has features that the 745 doesn't have. And if you're curious how the Foreigner 255 stacks up against the new Foreigner 955 slash 955 Solar, I've got another video going over all that as well as my super in-depth review of the 955 Solar, which I'll have linked down in the description below. And if you have any questions about anything I didn't cover in this video, make sure to leave those in the comments section down below. And on your way down there, if you found the information in this video useful, do me a favor, just hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel for plenty more sports thick videos that are coming soon. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.